welcome everyone again to another episode of the Idea Me Show, the show that profiles the humans behind the really big ideas that are shaping our world and inspiring uh, future innovation, creation, and all those like really good stories. Uh, I'm Ira Pastor. I'm your aging health and longevity ambassador along for this journey uh, through the complex uh, architecture of the aging process and the diseases of aging. And so for the last several months, we've been profiling many of the, the cutting edge technologies that are in the pipeline, uh, moving along from what I, you know, I like to refer to as a 20th century symptom treatment model to the 21st century curative model, where hopefully we can really begin to have an impact on these chronic degenerative diseases responsible for human suffering and death. Uh, however, you know, we have to be honest that the future is constantly being created uh, and developed. And although we were making a lot of progress, uh, the development of these beneficial therapies for unmet medical need does not always occur at the same pace everywhere in the world. Uh, it depends greatly on both geography and respective regulatory systems. Uh, you know, on a recent show, uh, we talked about the topic of, uh, of metformin, an extremely safe and very efficacious uh, anti-diabetes drug. It was discovered in 1922. Uh, it was marketed in France in 1957, but for some odd reason, it took until 1995 for patients in the United States to be able to access this drug. Uh, 40 years is a little long to wait, especially um, when we're dealing with no option patients. Uh, and unfortunately, every year that goes by, we watch literally millions of these no option patients uh, go to the grave. Uh, and when we talk about no option, uh, we're talking about patients with serious medical conditions where the existing standard of care has been exhausted and who unfortunately will endure needless suffering or death without further interventions. Uh, so, you know, today's guest, who is really trying to change this dynamic everywhere in the world, uh, is Jacques Vink. Uh, he is the founder and CEO of a company uh, called The Social Medwork, whose tagline is Global Health Access for Everyone. Uh, the Social Medwork is an organization that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week to empower patients and doctors globally to access the newest and most innovative medicines that are not yet available within country of residence of certain patients, but have been approved elsewhere. Uh, they utilize legal processes that are in place, they understand regulations, they engage with both providers and customers directly, and they really unlock these possibilities to help patients everywhere uh, gain access to the most effective medications that are out there. Uh, to date, they have helped doctors and patients in 80 different countries, and have been able to deliver new medicines to patients, physicians, and pharmacies across four different continents. Uh, very excited to have you here. Jacques, thanks so much for coming on the show. Tell us just a little bit about your journey, uh, how you uh, made it to this place, and what led you to create uh, this innovative organization, the Social Network. As, as a matter of fact, what you were uh, talking about, a um, situation of waiting for 40 years for medicine uh, to come to your country or, or to be available for you as patients is, is of course, um, a, a very extraordinary example. Um, uh, but unfortunately, it's, uh, it's an example that still occurs every day. And I was, my background's completely different. Uh, my background's business economics. I've been in marketing um, uh, as an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur for uh, more or less all my life. Um, and then at a certain moment, I was confronted with the situation of a very close friend of mine who was diagnosed with a serious illness like you just described and who ran out of treatment options. And there was a treatment available, as a matter of fact, at that time in the US, and he was living in Berlin. And his professor who, uh, who was the treating doctor uh, was really eager to, um, uh, to have him on that treatment, but they did not succeed in accessing this treatment and getting it uh, to, to Germany um, because it was not yet uh, EMA uh, approved um, nor available in, the, uh, in Europe. Um, and, and two months before uh, the treatment uh, was approved uh, uh, by the EMA, he passed away. So we'll never know whether he would be able to benefit from this treatment, yes or no. And that was really frustrating. Um, and, and not having that, that, that regulatory nor medical background, um, but, but having to deal with, let's say, supply and demand for, for all of my life already, I thought this is too frustrating. Especially when I found out that there's that it was not just my friend 
um, who happened to be in that situation, but uh, and, and, uh, it was really thousands of people only across his country that were um, uh, facing this same situation. And, and that made, made me think of, okay, how could we solve this? How could we, how could we actually accelerate the access to such potentially life-saving treatments? Just tell us a little bit more about sort of the mission of the company then, and then uh, sort of, you know, I've seen some models in the past that have tried this and maybe not been very successful. Tell us about sort of what sets your group apart, because you're really having such success uh, in, 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 in spanning across the globe now. What is, the, you know, tell us about that. And, and uh, I re- within a very short period of time. Right. And because, because actually after some piloting, we are now operational uh, since, uh, since only about two years. So, um, and, and, and um, having delivered successfully to over 80 countries and patients and doctors actually reaching out to us mm-hmm. already from over 135 countries. So there's still many countries to go, uh, which is really extraordinary. And um, you were talking about, and, and I really have to, there's a lot um, pros and cons on, on the whole industry like it's organized now at this moment. Hey, let's be clear on that. And mm-hmm. we all talk about patient centricity and about all kind of challenges that we, that we are facing as humanity, as, as communities, um, uh, and also as an industry, as pharma industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I think we are heading for, for a wonderful future in which there's lots of fantastic innovations uh, we are more and more heading from from treating a, uh, treating a, an ill person towards uh, preventative care and etc. Et and so I'm really optimistic about this. Mm-hmm. Um, I just recently uh, visited Singularity University mm-hmm. and was really uh, astonished by but what kind of what kind of innovations um, will be there within the next ten years. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's one thing that many still forget, and that is the distribution of these kind of uh, uh, this kind of innovations. You know, we think it's completely normal that nowadays, by, by because of uh, uh, iTunes and Spotify's, um, if there's uh, an artist that has a new song, it will be available for the whole world right away mm-hmm. within 24 minutes. Uh, uh, it is it is w- within 24 hours. It's available across the world. Whereas, uh, and that's just entertainment. Whereas uh, when, it's, when we're dealing uh, with life-saving treatments, it really takes years and years um, uh, to come to every market in, in, in the world. And you might think that this is uh, especially um, a, a problem for, for the underdeveloped countries, mm-hmm. uh, but it's not. Actually, at this moment, most of our, the patients and doctors that, that we support are coming from the US. Because at this moment, and it happens to be, because next year can be different again, but it happens to be at this moment that, for instance, on neurology, there's a couple of innovations that are only available in Japan. Right. Only in Japan, not in Europe, not in Australia, not in the US, not in Canada. It's only available in Japan. And, um, well, there's, there's a, a, a number of uh, professors from, from institutes across the US that are aware of that. And there's no one that bridges that gap between Japan and them. Uh, and they are really keen on, on having us now in place because we bridge that gap and we make it possible for them to treat their patients with the, be- uh, with the best care that is, uh, that is optional uh, available for them at this moment. And I often compare it because it is, you were talking about that extreme example of, of, of the 40 years, mm-hmm. uh, but it is, it is often uh, we don't realize, or also here in, in, in Europe, across Europe, people think that we have a wonderful system, which we have. Uh, there's, the healthcare system isn't too bad at all. But what we are not aware of is that the regulatory framework is still, it, it is simply outdated. It was, it was created about 40, 50 years ago, Complete different times, complete different questions, complete different, I would almost say, consumers, because patients are simply consumers, human beings like you and me, and shit hit the fan, and because of that, all of a sudden they're a patient. And, and the old system still thinks that they can be penalized, and it's not, of course, that's not acceptable anymore. Um, and, and at this moment, we should not only look at patients who um, ran out of treatment options. Mm-hmm. And because of that, we should allow them, we should show compassion and allow them to, 
um, uh, uh, to benefit from these uh, latest innovations. Actually, it is take yourself and when you're buying your new cell phone, you know, it is about here in, in, in Europe, for instance, on oncology, we are running behind on the US as an average about two and a half to three years. Mm. And um, when I'm comparing it to your cell phone, then I'm telling patients and also doctors, are you aware that in your protocols at this moment, you are still treating patients, life-threatening eh, uh, life ill patients with an iPhone 7, whereas the iPhone 10 is already available mm. somewhere else in the world. And if it would be about our phone, we would think it is an unacceptable. And now it is about life-saving treatment. And now we don't talk about it. We're not, we're not even aware of it. Right. So we should be aware that those great innovations that the pharmaceutical industry is working on, that at Singularity University, at all kind of e-health innovation companies they are working at, I really applaud for them. I really think these are great times. Mm -hmm. And we should organize distribution of this kind of innovations in a complete different way. And that is where we come in. Uh, we have shown now that within two years, we could bridge the gap from the innovation towards the patient and his treating doctor um, uh, uh, in, in, in over 80 countries, only within two years. If we can do it, we all can do it. How does the, obviously, you know, you have the patient in the middle of the process, but then, of course, there's the the treating physician and then at the other end of that sort of pipeline is you know you're dealing with drug companies um or a drug company that may be developing one drug in the u.s but have it approved already as you said in japan what have you uh, how is the relationship uh, and how do you manage that relationship with these different parts of the of the picture and then also i guess you know sitting here with my u.s hat on uh you know here in the u.s we have this oddball healthcare system where there's also the payer. Um, how do yeah. they, those three parties look at this? Because I think they'd be, you know, you're saving lives uh, as well. And, you know, saving lives, of course, controls cost. Um, so how do those three parties integrate in this thing? And how are you handle all of that? Well, well and actually, there's also the politicians, the okay. regulators, sure. and the regulatory bodies. And, um, uh, you know, speaking then from my US hat, I'm in the, in the board of two uh, US-based uh, patient organizations, uh, the Washington-based um, um, uh, Abigail Alliance, for Better Access to, um, uh, to Drugs, and, and the Chicago-based um, um, Cures Within Reach. Right. And I, I know the situation in the US very well, as I also know the situation in, uh, across Europe, and as a matter of fact, across the world by now very well. And, and I can tell you that this is, this is an industry in which there's not been huge changes yet. Um, uh, we've seen in many of the other industries that gradually, be, and especially because of the internet and knowledge being spread over the internet, that industries have made major changes. And I think we're in the forefront of this major change within this industry as well, which is going to be a complete different ecosystem. You can now already tell that uh, the uh, Apple, Google, Amazon, they all, let's say, interfere in this industry already. And it is unstoppable that, that the ecosystem of this, of this industry and of healthcare as a whole, that it will, uh, will be different. Um, um, having said that, it goes without saying that the knowledge, the innovation power um, that's there within the industry, um, the knowledge there is with healthcare payers, mm -hmm. the knowledge there is within patient organizations, uh, the knowledge there is with, um, with treating physicians is, is, is needed as well within this new ecosystem. The only thing is the roles are going to change. Right. And we are really inviting all of these parties involved, who all our stakeholders within this new ecosystem, we are really inviting them to join us on this journey because we need each other. Mm -hmm. And um, um, you, can, you can see as it is with, uh, if you're, if you're um, a, a, a trailblazer, then it takes time. People need to get used to it. People don't know about it so there it scares them off a little bit and it's 
Uh, and then you have the early adapters. You have, well, and at a certain moment, you reach a tipping point. Mm -hmm. um, and we are gradually heading for that tipping point. It is more and more that uh, 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 um, pharmaceutical companies, and it started with the smaller biotech companies who are more innovative, I think, in, their, in the way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but now gradually also the big pharma companies reaching out to us, being curious, uh, wanting to have discussions on how we could jointly um, um, reach out to patients in regions of the world in which they hardly reach out to patients at all at this moment. So you can see that more and more uh, the, the entity is being taken over by curiosity and people now want to want to see and want to try and want to explore and that's positive that's very good Definitely. it will for sure it will take more time but gradually but steadily we're getting there yeah, yeah definitely and that's the way that's the way it all happens so when major revolutions happen yeah, um, yeah. so uh, you know if i or my loved ones you know get that diagnosis um i come to the social network what, what typically does the process look like? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the process is, as a matter of fact, it's, it's, it's made uh, rather, rather easy and simple now. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to, to achieve, of course, to make it easier and more comfortable. And, you know, most of the people working with us are, um, uh, they have either medical background, it's, it's MDs, it's pharmacists, it's scientists, it's, but it's also regulatory lawyers. Um, so we know what we did, what we're talking about. We've been dealing with it now for thousands of times and we're trying to make the process as human friendly, I would almost say as possible, both for the, for the patient, but also for the physician, because let's be honest, physicians work their asses off to help all of those patients. And, uh, you know, for them, it's also difficult to, to be in a process that you're not familiar with and uh, because they, they don't do it on a regular basis. Eh? It's not their daily thing to um, all of a sudden be involved in treating a patient with a treatment that is not yet approved in your country. Um, so we, we really try to help them as much as possible. This, the, the, as it works now, to put it bluntly, is that you reach out to the social network, then you are in contact uh, with one of the support team members, the patient support team members. They explain to you what in your country is needed, because that might differ per country, on uh, paperwork and um, uh, the, the doctor's prescription that you need, because the, uh, your treating doctor is the one that has the knowledge about your treatment plan about your the treatment history, etc. So the doctor really needs to be involved, um, uh, and then and then you upload the documents uh, to the social network um, uh, on the on the prescription. It's exactly mentioned what is needed for your treatment. Um, uh, then you receive uh, a pricing for what is needed for your treatment. Uh, you make a payment by credit cards, to put it very bluntly and the treatment is being uh, uh, ordered with the manufacturer and is being uh, sent to your country. We um, uh, make sure that it, that it is imported in your country correctly. And take again the US situation. In the US situation, we have many deliveries. Often they are stopped at customs mm -hmm. with FDA, which is great because I think it's very important that FDA has a sharp eye on it but paperwork etc is always perfectly in in order and within most of the time 24 hours um, um it's it's out of customs and it's cleared and it's uh, being delivered at your doctor or your doctor's pharmacy and your treatment plan can start you would almost say that the funny thing or the nice thing or the extraordinary thing is that sometimes and we've we've now delivered in over 80 countries and so that is also also cold chain deliveries sure. in the center in the center of Zimbabwe or so you know and that right. is, it is really challenging deliveries as well and it is really well all of the people over here uh, almost all of them have histories themselves as well with 
friends or with family members. And as a matter of fact, Ira, I don't know how it's with you, but I think most of us, unfortunate, have situations within circle of friends or circle of families. Uh, they feel very strongly connected to what we're doing every day again. Mm -hmm. And it is really seen as a victory if then such delivery in the midst of Zimbabwe is successfully. <laughs> and, uh, and the doctor can inform us that his treatment plan is started with this patient. You know, well, you can understand that. Uh, that's really, it's really a very yeah, nice way of dealing with something that is so, it's, as a matter of fact, it's so small, so unimportant, and at the time, uh, same time, so extremely important. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a wonderful journey for ourselves as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you mentioned the cold chain. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, cold chain delivery in the middle of the Sahara Desert, if you can, if you can yeah. handle that, yeah. yeah, you have your business in order. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and even it was, I, I happened to be last week in, uh, in Barcelona at an I4 Pharma conference where it was a, a, a lot of pharma com pharmaceutical companies and some of them came to me and also asked me, how, the, <laughs> how on earth are you making this happening? Because we have, we have teams on it, special project teams. We can't make them. How, how do you do that? <laughs> but it is, you know, I, I think it is as it should be. Um, pharma companies should focus on their innovations right. and their science because that's where their knowledge is. Um, the new health innovators, please focus, guys, on your innovations because mm -hmm. you're such smart asses and you're so good at it. And we help you distribute across the world. Don't worry about that because we know the regulations. We know what is allowed and what isn't allowed. We know exactly how we can support a doctor in an appropriate way because we, we, we value doctors very highly. They're very important to their patients. And, um, you know, that's the part we can make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you know, this is a show uh, about big ideas, which you obviously have, and it's also about looking at the future. Uh, obviously, you've, uh, you've, you've 80 countries, four continents. Uh, I, I don't know how many patients you serviced so far, but you know, I was looking at the numbers um, in the US alone about just you know, how many people are gonna die this year because they don't have an access. And then also sort of the a number on top of that about how many patients don't even think about uh, looking at expanded access programs or clinical trials, things of that nature. How do you see this thing taking off? I mean, I, I, uh, when are you going to get to millions of uh, of patients a year? Are you, are you hiring? Are you expanding? What's what's the sort of the future view here? Because yeah, there's so many patients that need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, well, we've been helping thousands of patients. We've been delivering thousands of medicines and um, that were not approved in their in their home countries, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we are now scaling up very rapidly. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think there's, there's a couple of other, I would almost say hurdles that, that, and challenges that we're still facing and we are still facing, I don't mean the social network, but I mean uh, we as a whole, as an ecosystem and, and as society as a whole, a global society. Um, um, and, and, and one of them is of course the affordability of medicines. Let's be clear on that. It is um, uh, with, um, me distributing medicines across the world, you're also facing the situation of affordability. And affordability is uh, differs from country to country and differs from person to person. Um, you know yourself the situation in the US. As long as you have money, there's no problem at all. You can afford the best treatments possible. If you don't have any money, which is for many in the US, then you really have a problem. If shit hits the fan, you really have a problem because you can only afford a couple of treatments and that might be not enough. And you might not be able to afford even the iPhone 7, but maybe you have to have to uh, be comfortable with the iPhone 4. At this moment, we are then, uh, from a, I would almost say more philosophical point of view, um, when we're talking about human dignity, mm -hmm. we should not allow each other to think it is normal that people who have the money, and let's be honest, I'm on the good side of, of that uh, chart, 
and uh, hopefully you are as well. But it's not normal that my children being born at a certain moment mm -hmm. in time, but happily being born in Europe, in one of the richest countries in Europe, has access to better treatment than the same child that is being born at the same moment, but in a different part of the world. Mm -hmm. That is not fair. And we as society should not accept anymore, and we as human beings should not accept anymore, that we think it is normal, that it goes without saying, because we are the happy few. So I think we really need to be heading towards a system in which the best care is available for everyone. And everyone is really all inclusive. It was also at Singularity University mentioned that this, this disruptive innovation um, is wonderful, but it has one big global challenge of the connected ones and the not connected ones, of the haves and the have-nots. And if we don't succeed in bridging that gap, then there will be that next world war. And that is what we all want to avoid. And I think healthcare is one of the, together, as a matter of fact, with education, one of the topics that should be addressed as, you, you know, this should be accessible for everyone. Which means that we had to put it concrete again, because at the end, I'm also an entrepreneur and I want to make, I want to make it repeatable, scalable, etc. And I think the solution on this very big issue lies in allowing ourselves as an industry and as society to find new pricing models that create inclusiveness. And I'm convinced it is possible as long as we're willing to share. And that is what our mission is about. Our mission is not just about creating ac accessibility for patients and doctors that are amongst the happy few and can afford. But at the end, our mission is also to work on this affordability in such a way that we create win-wins for society and for the industry, because we should make sure that we also still have this remaining innovative power. Mm -hmm. So companies should be allowed to make money. Companies should be allowed to make mistakes in the innovation. Companies should be allowed. We need that innovation power. We need that entrepreneurship. But this innovation power and entrepreneurship should contribute to a better world. Before I let you go, um, because I know you're extremely busy, uh, we typically wrap up this show, we, we move away from the innovation and the science, and we, we pop out a, a science fiction question, just to get your, uh, your thoughts. Um, if I allow you, Jacques Vink, to travel anywhere in time uh, and talk to somebody, a hero of yours, uh, Albert Einstein, Sigmund Freud, uh, Jesus, whomever, uh, and you could talk to this person, who do you want to go visit, and what are you going to talk to them about? And take your time with that one if you need to. Um, my first thought would be on, on that I would be very curious to meet Jesus. And, and I would love to discuss many of the topics we just raised with him on all inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. um, Having said that, I want to avoid that there's any connection with religion specifically because I, all inclusiveness is really all inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. So across the borders of countries, politics, religions, etc. So then I would go for, I think, a person that I admire very much um, and who was very inspirational for me and that is um, uh, that is Mandela ah. because Mandela succeeded in 
creating a common ground for people that had a bad history um, with each other yeah. and um, had many reasons to be pissed off at each other and to had many reasons and maybe even the right to ask for revenge or at least ask for justice. And still he succeeded to overcome all of these feelings, all of this anger, all of this, and he succeeded in creating common ground, which at that time was much needed in, um, in South Africa. And it's really a, a huge loss for South Africa. I love that country. And it's a huge loss for South Africa that Mandela has gone. It was, from a personal point of view, fully understandable that he stepped, stepped away from it and, and then he passed away. And, but from a political point of view, it was 20 years too early because now it is, it is moving backwards again, which is really a pity um, um, because it's a beautiful country. But I admire him very much that he succeeded on doing that and i think that that kind of people are needed to help us as human beings overcome the challenges that we have on sharing with each other what we have in life instead of being afraid and building walls or or um, um, sending people back to their countries whether it's in mexico on latin america or it's in the sahara and in africa uh, but willing to share of our prosperity willing to share of our knowledge and our experience and and inspiring others and helping others to create that that possibilities and grab opportunities for themselves as well and i think mandela would be a wonderful i would almost say coach on that so so yeah we definitely need more of that in 2019 <laughs> and that's all i'll say about absolutely. that absolutely absolutely <laughs> let's keep it as is yeah yes. so uh once again uh jacques vink founder and CEO of The Social Medwork, global health access for everyone, uh, doing truly amazing things, making change happen with big ideas, uh, thinking outside of the box, innovation. And as the, I, I love the sign behind you, today is a great day to help save lives. Uh, and every day should be, and we should always be thinking about that. Jacques, thanks so much for, for coming on the show today and, and, and sharing your wisdom with us. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. Thank you.